Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. You join me today, of course, in the Golf R. This hasn't been on the channel for an awfully long time, actually. Um, and there's a very good reason for that. Well, no, there isn't, but there's a very good reason why. <laughs> We're in it at quarter to seven in the morning. It's time for some more upgrades and we've got a bit of a journey ahead of us. Um, but yeah, very much so looking forward to this. At the moment, the car is kind of 80% where I want it. But these final bits, which you'll see in this video and in some future videos, will really finish it off. So I'm very much so looking forward to it. I do have a long journey ahead of me this morning. It's about two and a half hours. Um, so we'll kind of hit the road and get going. And then I can explain more about what it is we're doing when I reach my destination later this morning. <laughs> I think it goes without saying this car really isn't at home on a motorway. The amount of road noise, every noise known to man actually, come to think of it, um, you hear. And to be honest, where's it gone? My uh, little AirPods here are my best friend, so <laughs> these <laughs> make it a little bit less unbearable. Um, but yeah, we're about halfway through my journey to my destination. The destination in question actually is a place called Area Motorsport, quite a big name. Uh, in the kind of motorsport industry, I suppose you could say. They do a lot of MQB cars. They run a lot of golfs uh, themselves, I believe GTIs. But yeah, a really cool place and uh, a company I'm very much so looking forward to working with. So yeah, the car is going up there today. Uh, it's gonna be left up there for a few days actually for them to do the work. We will show you the parts going on the car when we get there. Um, it's all gonna to tie together very nicely uh, to be kind of not the finished product, but something which I'm then comfortable to use for this track season, basically. Um, so yeah, we're gonna drop it off there um, and then pick it up later on in the video once it's all done. But uh, we're gonna keep on munching away the miles. And to be honest, before I get a headache, I should probably put this back in because it is <laughs> very loud in here. <laughs> Here we are then at Area Motorsport, just arrived with next to their Mark 8 Golf GTI. These guys run a lot of golfs actually. In fact, I think they, they definitely compete in some. I'm not sure exactly what championship. I think it's Club Enduro or something like that. So they build basically endurance cars. Um, so yeah, the golf is in good hands, that is for sure. Um, now, as you guys would have seen in previous videos, we have done a few bits of uh, kind of visual aerodynamics and things like that. Most certainly the MGC uh, adjustable rear wing. Uh, this is probably one of the most controversial things I've done to the car. Um, it, maybe it looks a little bit funny at the moment without any other aero. Personally, I think it looks mega. <laughs> I think it really sets the car off. If you're gonna have a race car, then you gotta have some aero, some crazy aero, and that is exactly what we have. Uh, but yeah, this is the MGC wing, as you guys would have seen, customized with my logo in there quite a lot of adjustability on it actually and I've done one track day uh, with it so far but the bits which we're fitting today at area are really going to tie all of that together um, so essentially we're doing some future proofing for a different setup on the wheels uh, and tires um, so we're going to have uh, some wider rear arches that's going to match uh, the wider front arches so these are going to be kind of like some bolt-on uh, rear arches which we'll show you in a moment as well they've been color coded to lapis blue of course different wheels and tires will be going on soon so stay tuned for that um, these wings i've just been speaking to the guys at area uh, unfortunately we are going to have to do some adjustments basically th whilst these are wider unfortunately the lip on the inside is actually worse than what you'd have on a factory wing so I mean, yeah, slightly silly by me, uh, buying wider wings to fit wider wheels eventually, and they're actually narrower than stock. So maybe these are kind of show wings, not the best idea, um, but yeah, they do look cool and I do want to keep them. So we're gonna be doing some uh, jiggery pokery to see if we can make that all work. Uh, up the front, of course, the front uh, of the car is pretty much stock, aside from the bonnet, which we'll get to in a second. But whilst the car's here, we're gonna be having a little bit of a setup going up uh, going on at the front to match the craziness of the rear. Again, we'll show you some of the parts in a moment. Um, but yeah, whilst we're here at the front, this bonnet is pretty cool. Carbon vented bonnet. Of course, you would have seen that fitted at Auto ID along with the wings and uh, the rear spoiler recently as well. Uh, but yeah, exposed carbon on the vents here with the color coded center section. Looks really, really cool. 
And whilst I think maybe at the moment the card does look a little bit, not unfinished, but I mean, we've got the stuff going on at the back and kind of on the wings, the bonnet, but the front does look a little bit unfinished. But this has always been the plan to come here to area to have a load of bits done. So I think what we'll do, we'll head on inside. We have most of the parts uh, in there on the top. So we'll have a look at that before I basically leave the car here in their capable hands to do everything. And then later on, we'll come back and see it all finished. <laughs> Okay, so we're joined now with Rob here from Area. We've got most of the parts uh, all lined up here. So we're still missing a few bits, I believe, aren't we? Um, but yeah, yeah basically uh, give us a run through about what, what it is we're looking at, what it is we're, we're fitting, really. Yeah, so the only bits not in the pile here is the air dam and the splitter, which we're, we're getting tomorrow. We have mm -hmm. one of our customers that races, does a lot of woodwork, so he CNC cuts the splitters <laughs> yeah, for us. Yeah. So. Um, we're at Donington tomorrow and he's, he's bringing your splitter up, so oh, that's awesome. not here. Um, we've got just the very basic side skirts and what we do with these is, if you imagine your arches, which are obviously painted for you now, yep. if that was the rear left-hand side, yeah. effectively your arch is here, this comes down and we cut this flush and, and it, it. it sits yeah. there. Yeah. So it basically covers the wheel from looking and yeah, it gotcha. straight on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they are just mini arches. Obviously, yeah. what we do is we cut the two inner skins on your rear quarter, mm -hmm. um, we fold them over, weld them together, seam seal it, yeah. put a bit of paint over the top, which again we've mm -hmm. got in yeah. your colour. So that's the rear arches. Yeah. That'll allow you to fit 18 by 10 with a 265 mm -hmm. with some space to spare yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll have no okay. rubbing issues at all. Cool. Splitter brackets. So these are what we run on all our race cars. Um, so tried and tested up to about 145 at Spa, mm -hmm. realistically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you won't hit that on any UK circuit and there's no deflection, no flex at all. Yeah. It's, it's done Brilliant. quite simply. These bolts are your two lower crash bar points. Mm -hmm. These Johnny Tiggs on. So when you want to remove the splitter, they're captive and they're countersunk underneath. So to remove the splitter is 10 bolts and takes a couple of minutes. Yeah. Rather than having to take your front bumper off, unbolt everything off the crash bar, sure, yeah. it makes it a lot easier to get mm. access to do things if you if you need to. Yeah, yeah. There's height adjustment. We're gonna, we had a chat and obviously our race cars, our regulations are 65 mil. So yeah. the lowest setting is 65 mil. Yeah. Because the lower it is, the more effect the splitter has. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, we're not gonna do that yours. Yours will be about <laughs> 90 mil. Yeah, um, it's still gonna be used on the road in this. So, so. yeah, hopefully yeah. you survive yeah. on the road with it. Um, <laughs> So, so, yeah. But yeah, it's gonna it's gonna make a huge difference actually to the appearance of it because whilst it does look well pretty cool if I do say so uh, at the moment I think with the splitter set up at the front especially it's gonna look it's gonna look really cool and uh, obviously future proofing ready for a different setup as well. Um, so yeah, I mean I'll be leaving the car here for a couple of days um, and then yeah I'll come back later on in the video where it'll all be done and then yeah. we can have a look around it and um, you can have a before and after yeah and, and take it away. Okay, we're back. It's been a couple of days. We're back at area. The car is just off camera there. It looks wild. Obviously, up until now, we've done a few um, cosmetic things. Obviously, the rear wing, the bonnet, and the wings, as we mentioned, and as you guys would have seen. Uh, the rear wing is completely functional, but it didn't match what was at the front of the car and what was on the side of the car. That has changed now. Obviously, I'm still running the same wheels as before, so it will look a little bit strange, but trust the process, it's, it's nearly there. It's nearly there and it looks wild. It looks completely wild and maybe pretty controversial. So I think without further ado, check this out. So what do we all think of this then? I mean, you knew that this car was wild, but I mean, check this out. This thing looks proper. Now, of course, not completely finished yet. Still need to change the wheels. These are still, uh, well, the wheels that you will obviously already recognize that have been on the car for a while, the 235-35-19s. Uh, they are being changed out. Uh, actually, there was a little bit of a sneak peek in a previous video, so if you've seen that, then you'll probably know roughly what's going on. But the elephant in the room, the splitter. It is mental. So this uh, is a chassis mounted splitter with the air dam running around uh, the fascia. This is the more crazy <laughs> of the variations that you can get. Um, it can be modified still, and I am kind of yet to really decide whether I want to keep it like this or whether I want to cut it down. So basically about this thickness 
all the way through. Um, it is absolutely solid as a rock and I will be painting it black as well. So, I mean, at the moment it's not in its completely finished state, but it is uh, there for a purpose. And uh, yeah, I think now matching the rest of the air on the car, it looks absolutely wild. I know it's gonna be pretty controversial, but believe me, this car is not a show car. Everything that's on it is for a purpose. Um, so yeah, I mean, for that reason, I'm in love with it really. And I cannot wait to see what it's like uh, when you get it out on track. Because when I went for a track day, once I had the wing fitted, you definitely noticed that. I mean, uh, top speed, obviously you do get you do get affected, but it shows it's working. And under braking as well, it was exceptional. But when I did bring the car here to area, it kind of didn't really match up because we had the rear wing, we had the wider wings and the bonnet, but we didn't have the final pieces of the puzzle. This angle down here though is just absolutely mental. You can imagine that with the correct wheel fitments on there, it's gonna look absolutely incredible. And of course, with the splitter painted in black as well. So as I mentioned, this is the more extreme splitter you can get. You can get one which is slightly cut down and because this is essentially motorsport wood, you can cut it down and I may do that myself. It will be painted black though, as I mentioned. It's fully adjustable. Uh, as you saw, probably the brackets when, um, when I dropped the car off here, so it's fully adjustable. So you can customize exactly where you want it and it's situated 95 mil from the ground. Moving round though, past the carbon wings, and of course the carbon bonnet, which you're already familiar with, uh, down to the side skirt kit. Now this was mainly put into place just to kind of make the rear arches make a little bit more sense because these are of course wider. These are about 30 mil wider, matching the 35 mil uh, from the wings. Of course, color matched in lapis blue as well. Um, and it's not just a case of plonking these on the original quarters. The geyser area have basically cut away any uh, excess behind here from the original quarter and a little bit on the bumper just to make sure it's all clear and safe. It's also then been welded up and prepped behind here as well. So no issues of any rust uh, in the future. But yeah, these, they look a bit silly now with the wheels, as I've mentioned, but it's just gonna look absolutely epic once the wheels are on and it's kind of complete. So yeah, now dare I say it, this massive wing does kind of make sense now when you see the rest of the car with the wider arches and the chassis mounted splitter up front. It looks absolutely bonkers and I absolutely love it. I mean, look at that down the side. How wild is that? You can imagine that when the wheels are poking out the side of the arches, sitting flush, it's gonna look pretty incredible. And of course it does match basically what the interior looks like. Cause in here, it's definitely not stock either. The full Pinnacle Motorsport T45 welding cage with the interior respray, of course, the custom Tillet B6 Screamer seats and also all of the carbon, bits some carbon tech like that. Yeah, this car is really turning out to be a road legal race car, really, dare I say it. Of course, we have the slider windows, Perspex windows all around apart from the windscreen. But yeah, this makes me really excited to not only get it out on track to see what it's like, but also to get the new wheels on and the new tires because then it will be perfect. Now I must give the guys here at Aerie Motorsport a big thank you and shout out purely because this is not normally something they offer for general customers. They run a race team and a load of race cars. These parts are exactly what they run on their own stuff. If you check out their Instagram and stuff, all linked down in the description, you will see this is proper race car stuff. <laughs> I know that this is gonna be pretty controversial. Some people are gonna hate it, but I'm hoping that some of you are gonna see the vision that once the wheels are on, it will then make sense and then we'll be looking at essentially a road legal race car. I mean, this has always been my vision with this car. I bought it completely stock about two years ago. Of course, we've had all the performance upgrades done. It's running about 500 horsepower now. We've got a manual, we've stripped it out. We've done the full interior build um, and then we're working away on the aero. And this is, to be honest, the aero is something which I should have done sooner because it makes a big difference, especially when you're on track. These kind of things only really pay off when you're going at speed. So I'm very much so looking forward to seeing what it's like. Stay tuned, of course, for the new wheels and tires going on the car. That is gonna make a big difference to the car, obviously, because at the moment, the fitment is not ideal. Um, but yeah, for me today, that is it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, I'll be interested to see what you guys think, uh, whether some of you can see the vision of what this car is turning out to be. Um, but as I said, that is it for me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure to subscribe for all the adventures still to come.